Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. Alia today, Okia Omtata gave a detailed analysis, blow by blow, on how IBC, through a fuller Chebukati, played on the turnout to award William Ruto over 500,000 votes. It was a detailed analysis. But in this video, I want us just to have a look at a bit of the analysis for it's going to form the basis of our discussion in this video right now. Have a look at this. And you can see that he's giving us, <coughs> he gives data of how the Kim's kits transmitted on 9th August at 17 hours at the close of polls. He gives that figure. On 9th August at 20 45 hours, about some 3 hours and 45 minutes, he gives his figure of 13 million. Then, most surprisingly, you have two entries. There's an entry that number, which gives us at 14 hours and 14 40 hours. The Kim's kids are transmitting some 23 hours later, still transmitting data. And we are saying that that data is not acceptable. So we come to the next slide. I'll just run through given the short time I have. When you go to that slide, you look, they tell you at 20.45 hours, on 9th August 2022, some 13,731,215 people voted. Polling turnout recorded on 10th August is 14,239,862 ballots. And on the 10th, that is the day after the voting, and we know that it's only elders where elections were taking place. Now, when you analyze that data, you find that 508,647 ballots are added on the 10th. And you saw Land Council Willis show that the audit of the register had almost the same number of ghost voters. So you can see from that data that they, they present, Mr. Sunguli presents, you are able to isolate 508,647 ghost cast votes which are more than the difference between the two con leading candidates. Yes. Besides that, Okia Omtata also exposed on how Chebukati used the turnout as a moving target to manipulate results to conform to a predetermined outcome. And that's how eventually he arrived on William Ruto as the winner. So in this video, I want us to dig deep. I want us to dissect all that to see what it portends for William Ruto in the ongoing petition at the Supreme Court of Kenya. Before we do that, in case you are watching us for the very first time, Subscribe, give this video a like. Yes. That expose by Okia Omtata just reinforces the notion that nobody attained 50% plus one vote as per IBC results. So William Ruto never attained 50% plus one vote. And it also reinforces the submission by lawyer <laughs> Willis Otieno, the pinky ponky lawyer, who also just exposed that according to KPMG report, KPMG stipulated, or rather stated, that there were about 
500,000 voters, ghost voters, in the register. And with the 500,000 votes we are seeing, that difference of 500,000 votes, looking at the turnout, it also conforms to the 500,000 ghost voters KPMG had flagged out as they were doing an audit on the register. And in my considered opinion, that can convince the Supreme Court judges that William Ruto was not validly elected as the president. William Ruto never attained 50% plus one vote. I'm seeing that as having that potential of convincing and influencing the judges to invalidate William Ruto's win. And also from that expo expose, it shows clearly that Wafula Chebukati bungled this year's presidential election. Chebukati was acting more as a William Ruto's agent within IEBC. Already Chebukati wanted William Ruto to be announced the winner, finally. And that's why even from other submissions that were made, Chebukati single-handedly managed the affairs of the commission. So Chebukati had a predetermined outcome with the presidential elections. And also listening to Paul Mwangi, Paul Mwangi also brought a very interesting discussion in that as much as the constitution gives Chebukati the powers to announce or rather declare the presidential election results, the constitution does not give Chebukati that power to determine who emerges the winner. So in a nutshell, Okia Omtata just added more weight to Raila's petition that indeed William Ruto was not validly, validly elected as the president. And also having followed the proceedings, the submissions by the petitioner's lawyers, it was very clear, ladies and gentlemen, and this is something that is beyond any reasonable, is, is, it was very clear. And I also saw Justice Smokin Wanjala making it very clear that if at all the submissions by the petitioner's lawyers are anything to go by, then it's clear Wafula Chebukati is a monster <laughs> within IBC. What <coughs> Chebukati exercised more powers than actually the constitution gave him. And in my honest opinion, just as I've been saying in this forum, this year's petition, 2022 presidential petition, in my honest opinion, is going to be very easy for the Supreme Court judges to make a determination. And I also maintain that because IEBC itself as a commission, and this is something I keep on repeating, IEBC is split. It is divided. And even on that basis alone, the results that were announced by Wafula Chebukati cannot be trusted. On the basis that the commission, a majority of the commissioners, have disowned those results. Let me leave it there, ladies and gentlemen. In case you are watching us for the very first time, just as I did indicate when we were starting, subscribe, give this video a like. And to our fans and subscribers here, I'm very much humbled, very grateful for the kind of support you are giving me here. God bless you, God bless Kenya. To any other person, I've pinned my number on the comment section. In case you want to have a chat with me or to support the channel, you can reach me or you can send your donation to the number I've pinned down 
on the comment section. To any other person watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. And if possible, subscribe, give this video a like. Let's meet in our next analysis. God bless you. God bless Kenya.